Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is Joe, and we are going to talk some Kansas State basketball today. But before I do, let me tell you this. I know the background's different. I know it sounds a little different. I'm currently still on the road. Went out to Vegas to go visit K-State and watch them play USC last weekend, and then came straight up to Minnesota. So I'm on the road in Minnesota to visit my girlfriend. So that is why I have a different background as of right now. It's not a permanent thing just for this week. Everything will be back to normal by the next video you see. But for this one, you're going to have to deal with me uh, looking a little different or sound a little different. So I apologize in that sense. I am talking into a sock microphone and it looks a little bit weird. Um, It's just socked up. So that's why if that looks weird or sounds weird, that's part of it. But guys, I'm super pumped to talk about K-State basketball today. The Cats beat Bellerman 83-75 thanks to some big days from the guards, including a guy like Tyler Perry, a guy like Cam Carter as well as some solid play from a guy like Dead Ames. We'll talk about all that and more here in a couple of minutes to give you my thoughts about the game, what to look for going forward. But before I do all of that, guys, sound the alarm, stop the presses, do any other cliche thing that alerts people. We have a sponsor on the channel for these postly, these post-game weekly segments, these talk about different games segments. We've got our friends, the absolute legends, over at Manhattan Brewing Company jumping in, sponsoring the show, Each week, we're going to talk about Kansas State basketball. It'll be a little bit more than that as the season picks up. But as of right now, we should have five or six games in the month of November, and we'll touch base going forward from there. But we've got Manhattan Brewing Company as a sponsor for this channel. They have the best beer in the world. That is a 100% fact, and there's been polls and testing and statistical things that prove that. The greatest beer in the world, and everybody in the world has tested it. So go check out freaking Manhattan Brewing Company, dude. They have the best beer on the market. It's all K-State themed. Obviously, not all of it, in case there's any of you that... Might not be K-State fans. I don't know why you're not, why you'd be watching this video if that is the case. But they've got a Tang Party, and let me tell you, it is my favorite beer. Selfishly, that is incredible to have. And my girlfriend and I have been stocking up on our merch, on our glasses. So we've got a four-pack of the Manhattan Brewing Company glasses here, and it's been pretty sweet. But go ahead and check them out on game day, guys. They've got great game day environment, whether it be basketball, football, volleyball, or anything going on. And even if not, if you just want to go over there and play Scrabble and drink some beer, I'm always up for that. It's always a good time over there. Go ahead and check them out. Guys, they know the community of Manhattan. They are Manhattanites, if you'd say. Manhattanites, I assume, is the right way to say that. They know about the community. They're a part of the community. The three dudes that run it are incredible. Go ahead and check it out. I assume you've probably already been there, but in case you haven't, it is awesome. It is right there next to some cool restaurants. There's a lot of great things going on downtown in Manhattan. Go check out Manhattan Brewing Company, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about Manhattan Brewing Company as the season continues on in each week. For now, all you need to know is this. Tang Party tastes like the tears of an angel in the best way possible. So go ahead and check that out. You don't want to miss out. Thanks to Ben Ambry Company for sponsoring the video. Guys, let's talk some K-State basketball here. Let me tell you this. K-State, I know it was a dominant first half, and then you let off the gas in the second half. What are you going to do in that sense? I mean, it is what it is. However, you had some really solid guard play in this game from multiple people on the roster. I'm looking off the screen here because i got the stats pulled up. 34 minutes for Cam Carter. He's kind of your Marquise Noel in this game. You know, you're playing the majority of the game, most minutes on the team. 17 points, 4 steals, which broke a career high as previous was 3. 4 rebounds, 2 assists. Tyler Perry, 18 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds. Looked really good. Made smart decisions with the basketball, and I appreciate that whenever that happens. You've got Arthur Kaluma. Finished with 12. Don't want to move past that 12 and 6, so that's a good day. But how about Day Day Ames? 12.6 assists for the freshman guard. The dude is dealing. He's finding his teammates open, and he went on a straight-up personal scoring run to start the game off, hitting multiple deep threes. Heck of a day for Day-Day, and we're excited to have him going forward. The immediate takeaway from this, if you want to go with the positive side, you can't even want to go with the negative side, I'm just going to talk through what I think. I don't really have a, oh, we're going to lose because of this, or oh, we're going to win because of this. It's more or less just this is a game where you're learning about your team. Every week we're going to learn a lot more about the team. Switched up the starting lineup, you had Will McNair slide out there instead of Taj Manning in this game. The other four starters remain the same. I think we're going to see a lot of parity through the non-conference schedule of what the starting lineup looks like. I think you'll see a Darrell Colbert game. I think you'll see a Dorian Finister game, you know, and then maybe some of the true freshmen getting out there as well. We'll talk about all that going forward in the starting lineups and how everything's going to mold, but the main thing you take away from this game is the really solid guard play. Cam Carter is absolutely an NBA-level athlete. I mean, that dude is a monster. I want to commend him for the jump he made after freshman year to this. The dude is a hard dude to guard. Defensively, he was solid. Four, four steals in this, went coast-to-coast coast multiple occasions. Did have a couple of turnovers here and there, but that's basketball. I mean, you're going to learn from that. I don't think you worry so much about some of the sloppier plays because the dude's in attack mode. He's going downhill. He's going to put the ball in the basket eight times out of ten, and you take that. So Cam Carter tied his career high, had 20 in the exhibition match against Emporia State and then 15 against USC. Carter has a chance to be that 15, 16-point guy a night, as well as a dude like Tyler Perry. Huge shooting day for Tyler Perry. 
shooting and passing looked great. Four of eight from three, you know, shot 50% on the day. Can you ask for any much more than that? I mean, the dude is ripping the nets, and that's a good thing to see, as well as passing the ball around. I mean, that wasn't really, not to say he's not capable or he's not an assist guy, but that wasn't really the narrative with Tyler Perry coming out of a place like North Texas because their offensive efficiency was a little bit lower. It's a little bit slower, methodical. I mean, they're one of the slower, you know, less fast-paced offenses in the entire country. You'll probably see that at Texas Tech. If I, I, you know, if I'm a betting man, I'd take that. But I think you see some really great things here when the guys are running full speed. They're getting down court. They're getting up and down the court, sprinting on defenses, crashing the rim. I mean, you see Cam throw out an alley oop from you know just about half court from Tyler Perry. So you want to look at the guards and say they all did good. I'll tell you this, guys. Every single time I see R.J. Jones shoot the ball, it's going in the hole every time. That dude can shoot so well. And I tell you what, whether this you know makes you happy or not. He has a very similar shooting motion to Nigel Pack. That's kind of what I think of there. Yeah, he can do a little bit more off-platform right now, but I think this dude is going to really, really blossom into a great scorer. And then you get a guy like Day-Day Ames. I mean, I know I keep talking about him, but you have some really great players for the future of this program. And then you think about a David Castillo coming in to join that, to join that mashup next year. There's some really great things happening there. Now, on the other side of the coin, what the bad things are in this game yeah, I mean, you lose Naquan Tomlin, so I want to say that first things first. Early in the season, I am A-OK with the forward position being the struggle area as opposed to the guard play. Cam Carter has put himself into that category of, okay, this dude is an absolute weapon to have on the court. Every team in the country is going to have to game plan for a Cam Carter type guy. And if you focus too much on Cam Carter, you're going to have Tyler Perry who can shoot from anywhere on the court. And then you focus on the young guys, I mean, you have some really great guard play. The forward position, whether that be David Gasson, uh, Jarrell Colbert, Will McNair, uh, you've got a couple of different guys that can slide into that spot that played some big minutes. I mean, Arthur Kaluma obviously is kind of his own spot. Like that is his solidified position, but forward plays a little bit lackluster at the moment, but they're going to figure that out. You know, there's a room of experienced guys that are figuring things out. Jarrell Colbert, obviously the, obviously the young guy in that situation, but I did want to commend coach tank for when he was asked about Will McNair. And he said, you know, I think it was Derek Young KSO, um, talking about, you know, hey, what have you gotten out of Will McNair? Is he at where you thought he'd be at this point? And Tang said, point blank, he's like, no, I, I thought he'd be better by now. And it's not to say that he can't be better. It's just that there's a lot of things you have to figure out to get these peak form of guys. I mean, you have questionable coaches, and I don't want to just blame it about coaching or blame it on anybody like that. Not questionable coaches at K-State. Questionable coaches in Will McNair's career at Mississippi State, New Mexico State, a couple of different stops where there's been a lot of coaching changes through Will McNair's career. And it's not, you know, it's no disservice to him or whatever, but it just, it doesn't help you have consistency of what your coach expects out of you. And that's the point where Will McNair is at yet. We don't have much consistency at the forward position that should be there later in the season. That's going to get figured out. I'm not too worried. But a team like South Dakota State who's projected to win their conference, I mean, there's going to be good tasks in the non-con even if you don't see a team that's just like a massive name outside of USC. This team has good things to focus on. We're going to need more out of the forward position as it comes back. If there's a possibility to Naquan Talman back, we'll talk about that on the channel. I kind of think with where we're at right now, because that's going to be the immediate thing. Everybody's going to say, well, you know, man, not having Talman stinks, or having Talman would have been great with, you know, a guy like Cam Carter or Tyler Perry. It'd just be so great. You can focus on that, and I agree. I don't want to discredit that. It would be great. But I think I'm going to leave that a little bit on the back burner until we know, like, you know, there's a legal process that does have to happen. And that's not something the coaching staff can expedite or Tomlin can really expedite. I mean, there's just a process that has to happen. If we get him back, I would be over the moon excited about it. But until then, I'm just going to focus on the guys that are here. So this is kind of my caveat as to why I'm not talking about Naquan Tomlin as much going forward. Uh, but I think you're going to get some guys like Michaela Bridge off the bench that should make some plays this season. Didn't see him in this contest. Not sure what the plan is overall managing each guy, but there's going to be some people to keep an eye on. I think you come away from this game feeling good, knowing the offense has gotten better each time they've been on the court. The defense is still figuring itself out. It will get better at a slower rate because there's a lot, you know, there's there's just a different game plan onto the defense side of the ball. Uh, but overall, I mean, I think my main takeaway is like Cam Carter deserves every bit of the flowers he's going to get as a player. I mean, absolutely. You had people on the internet clowning Coach Tang, when he first accepted the job, it's like, wow, your first dip into the portal was a guy who averaged sub two points in his career. Look at all the great things Cam has done in his first year. He's a major contributor, played over 30 minutes in an Elite Eight game, as well as multiple games leading up to that point. And then now you look at him. This is a dude that has an NBA ceiling. Like, that's a realistic ex expectation for Cam Carter, and he's only a junior. So that's the only thing to keep in mind is, like, Cam won't – I'm just going to – for whatever reason – Cam's name isn't big enough in terms of the national media to see a guy and say, this dude is a dog. Get him on the court. 
But when you're throwing down LeBron-level dunks on top of dudes' heads, that's going to be a good sign. You'll see Cam Carter continue to evolve as a player and get more experience. I think it's a new role for sure, but, dude, he's a dog. I mean, he's the guy in this team. And if Cam Carter is in that peak form, you're going to see peak form of this team. I fully believe that. You're going to go on hot streaks, and you're going to go on cold streaks. That's kind of the narrative of this team. They're going to live and die by the three, which I'm sure the basketball purists will make themselves, you know, they'll be pulling their hair out for that. But overall, I like where this team's at. I like the moxie the team shows. We don't know what's coming next in terms of who's the next guy up, who's the next thing up. But I would bet a lot of money that we'll see a new lineup in the third game and we'll see some more things moving around. But either way, guys, I am excited about it and I'm excited to talk Kansas State basketball as things continue forward. I should have mentioned this way earlier in the video. If I ran into you in Vegas, shout out, dude. I met so many cool K-State fans out there and I'm so excited to meet all of you going forward. So everyone that stopped to take a, you know, take some time to talk to me or vice versa, I'm so grateful for you guys to do that. If for some reason I ever get to a game that you see me at or something, come over and talk. I would love to meet anybody. So it definitely made my day. And I think just like, the energy that you have with other fans is incredible. So I wanted to say a quick shout out to the guys that did show up in Vegas and say hello to a couple of groups of people. Shout out to everybody out there supporting K-State win or lose. We wear these colors true and I'm excited to see what happens next. Go Cats. Have a wonderful rest of your day, my friends. It'll be a new background next time and it will be all better. Sunshines and rainbows from here. Take care, my friends.